like um, singing in my bedroom and I, I keep jumping on my bed, but I don't sing like normal songs that have people have already um, sung. I just make up songs. Me and Edward just normally write down the songs that we're going to mm. make, make up and then Jed takes them home and mm. photocopies them. My cat was on the bed and I was singing about her. I wrote it down. My mum says, um, come downstairs to me and then turn the radio off and say, I can't hear you, I'm singing. But how do you help children develop their singing in the classroom? In the last programme, Kent music advisor Helen McGregor took the staff through exercises, chants and songs in an inset workshop. Now she's come back to see how they're using these ideas with their different year groups. First up is some team teaching in reception. So shall we start by rolling our shoulders back? To make us really nice and warm. Can we do that? Shall we give those shoulders a bit more of a wiggle? A bit more. Oh, well done. Baby. What about those hands? Do you remember the other day we said they were really wet, <laughs> didn't we? And we have to shake them off. Oh, no, this will warm you up, Eleanor. Shake them a bit more. What about those elbows? Are you ready to take a big breath then? Right from your tummy. Hello. Shall we see if we can make a noise as we flop this time? You started to try to do warm-ups? Yeah, we started by just doing the simple shoulder movements and just exploring their voices and making different sounds with them. And it wasn't something that we'd ever done before in music. We'd always done it with PE and lessons like that and when we are in the outdoor We've area never thought of things. warming up for music, really, but we never really we used really it for music, it. no. No, but it is, singing is such a physical activity. Yeah. It's, it makes sense, doesn't it, yeah. to warm the children's voices up gently and and gradually. I think it just gets them more focused, I doesn't more it? Focused. I think their, yeah. their facial muscles as well, they can actually move their mouths yeah. much more because they've already practised opening, closing. Yeah. And the range, the range, I think that helps them when we make those long hissing noises. Yeah, so they're just more conscious of it and not, not just doing it naturally, yeah. but actually trying to improve what they're doing by being aware of it. Yeah. Oh, yes, me. Someone's calling in my name. Oh yes, me. There it goes again. You're wanted on the telephone. If it isn't Maisie, then I'm not at home. With a ram, a ram, a ram, a ram, a ding, ding, dong. With a ram, a ram, a ram, a ram, a ding, ding, dong. You can see that there are different children who are very confident in using their singing voices. But did you notice that some of the children are still using their speaking voices? Some of them are getting the tune and are beginning to apply it, and some of them are still just speaking. Yes. Oh, Ashwin, someone's calling my name. Oh, Ashwin, there it goes again. For example, Ashwin, I think, was singing at his own pitch, which is great because he's beginning to get that idea of high and low sounds mm. and, and not using his speaking voice. But he's not tuning into the, the overall pitch of the song yet, which some of the other children were. So there's yeah. lots of different levels there. So the more games you can play, that actually explore the voice, that's going to help them to be able to pitch mm. and, and understand what's happening inside their bodies when they change from a speaking voice to a singing voice. Oh, Connor, someone's calling my name. Oh, Connor, there it goes again. You're wanted on the telephone. Who shall we have? You say the name. Choose a person, Connor. Come over here with me. Come on. So choose you, Em. Yeah. Ready? Ready? Well, if it is you and No, some children aren't going to be ready to sing exposed like that independently. And you did exactly the right okay. thing by supporting oh, that child and not right. forcing them to sing, because then they become mm. inhibited about it. And I just felt that if I left him out, then the, the barrier's becoming bigger for the next time. Exactly. Well, that's OK, yes. then. But what I would do is try and encourage that child, maybe in another way, by using puppets, for example, um, so that it's not the child who's singing a solo, but it's the puppet. Oh, so yeah, maybe yeah, if you had a glove puppet or a, a toy, yes, then yeah. um, the puppet can open its mouth and sing. In year one, Sarah Smith's class are experimenting with singing in character and exploring their range. 
you're going to do the Goldilocks chant with them this afternoon? Yeah. And, and uh, what's the aim of the session this afternoon? Um, to sort of get them to use their voices in different ways. So do the Lovely. deep Daddy Bear's voice, the middle, the, the sort of like middle pitched sort of mummy voice, and the high squeaky baby voice. Lovely. Ready? Who's been sitting in my chair? Said Papa Bear. Who's been sitting in my chair? Said Mama Bear. Hey, Mama Dina, said the little wiener. Somebody's broken my chair. Oh! Are you ready for your daddy bear growl? <laughs> that deep, low daddy bear sound. Who can do a really good middle mummy bear sound? Let's all have a go. Yeah. In the middle, not too low, not too high. And what about that really squeaky high baby bear? <laughs> really squeaky. That you should feel right up high. Try and get it in your nose. Try it again. Really up there. Feel it up there. So I particularly like the game where she got the children to just explore their low voices. And then you could see that the children were really physically moving their whole bodies to reinforce that idea of low sounds and raising their heads and sitting up to make the high sound. So that was working really, really well and they were beginning to get the idea of pitch through that. In this song that we sing, it's all about the Eskimo going out in his canoe and when he's doing the Oki Tukyunga, he's paddling his boat. So you can move the boat very quickly. It's a little boat. Why is the man going out in the canoe? What's he going to catch? Fish. Or a whale. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oki Toki Younger, Oki Toki Younger. Hey, Miss a Day, Miss a Do, Miss a Day. Sing up. Hey, Sakola Mishawani. Hey, Sakola Mishawani. Hey, Sakola Mishawani. Oki Toki Younger. Well, it's obviously a very lively class and they need lots of physical movement. It's quite difficult for some of the children to sit still. So doing the, the Oki Toki Younger song was really good for them because they were able to physically feel where the beats was in the song. Year five are developing round singing and ostinato. But first, they'll have fun with another voice we're exercise. We'll start off with some warm up to the voices, just the same as Helen did in the teacher's lesson. And then we're going to do the boom chicka boom game because I really like that and I find it fun and it gets them really warmed up. Say boom chicka rocka chicka rocka chicka boom. Say boom chicka rocka chicka rocka chicka boom. Aha. Aha. Ee hee. Ee hee. Oh ho. Oh ho. One more time. One more time. Say boom. Say Well, I did the quiet voice and you have to whisper really lightly so nobody can really hear you. I had to say it in an angry voice. I like the loud one. Gives us a different range of singing in a voice. You got to shout a lot and it got a lot of rage out like... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to use a Japanese frog song that we le we've learnt last week and we're going to look at singing it in um, a rhythmic pattern, looking at the pitch of the song as well. And then we're going to use that and take it one step further and actually split it into rounds. One group will be actually doing the chorus all the way through, keep repeating it over and over again, and then the other group will be singing the verse on top of it and layer it up so they can actually see the two parts working together. You used chime bars, didn't you, to play the tune to the children so yes. that they were really aware of those pitches. They need to hear something to copy and to realise how they have to pitch the sounds. Gua, 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 gua. Okay, 
actually what see, from doing it from the first time to today, actually see the children progressing and how they've actually really listened to the notes and actually pitching them much better than they were when we first started doing it. So the progress there was really good. Right, okay, should we be really... We're off to see Mike Trod. He's been working on a sea shanty called John Kanakanaka, which we did in the teacher's workshop. And I think the children have learnt it as a unison song, but they haven't developed it yet, so he's keen on developing the idea of part singing, and that's what he's going to be working on this afternoon. We love the songs, isn't it? And uh, we've been using the warm-ups. But I'm just going to walk down the middle, and if you stay on that side of me, you stay that side, and if you stay that side, you stay that side. This side, with me, we're going to sing the lines, the call, and then this side are going to do the response with the stamp and the John Kanakanaka 2 like A. Ready? John Kanakanaka to lie, John Kanakanaka to lie. Today I heard an old man say, John Kanakanaka to lie. Today, today's a holiday, John Kanakanaka to lie. To lie, to lie, to lie, to lie, to lie. Keep going. John can I can I keep going. Today I heard an old man say. John can I can keep going. Today today's a holiday. John can I can I keep Right, give yourself a big round of applause. That's very impressive. Okay. Do you think actually doing the actions with that particular phrase helped to keep yeah. the beat in yeah. their bodies so that they didn't speed yeah, up? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think if it had just been them just singing that over and over again, they would have got quicker and quicker. Yeah, because they're feeling the beat really clearly in their bodies, and and also they were really involved in that and working as a group to keep mm. together. Yeah. And that was so I suppose solid. They support each other, though, don't they? In that yes. Way. Yeah. So now I want you to stand on two sides. Was there a particular reason why you? had the children facing each other in two groups when they first split into two parts. And it seemed sort of the natural thing to do that they would sing to each other in that same way. So they become a bit more independent of you. Mm. Mm. And did you notice anything happen when that, when that started, when they were starting to sing in two groups facing each other? They were looking at children opposite and really getting to the, the spirit of the song and, and communicating it to somebody else mm. rather than singing it back and copying you. So it just suddenly came to life then. For me, breaking into part singing was something that I was always wanted to do but was never really confident to do that because I was always worried about it falling to pieces as you broke off into these different groups. But it doesn't need to be this overly complicated, terrifying thing to do. You know, you can build it up stage by stage and have a go at it and it does work. You can find some of the songs and exercises from these programmes online at the Teachers TV website to use in your own classroom. I think if you believe that you can sing and if you practice a lot then you can. You have to keep joyfully as you're singing it and not get embarrassed. You got to try. John <laughs> John